Welcome to Serial Tech. My name is Heath Fields, Product Manager, and this is our NVMe and PCIe transaction filtering. During this brief video, we'll overview our existing DLP and ordered set filter capability, we'll have an overview of NVMe transactions, and we'll demonstrate our NVMe transaction filtering. Here is a list of terms referenced during this presentation. Pause here to review. So we have here a, a bus expert PCIe analyzer locked and ready for use. Uh, we see that we have an 18 gigabyte buffer and that the, this buffer is set to loop endlessly until stopped manually. On our status screen, we see that we have a Gen 3 by 4 PCIe device. It's actually an NVMe drive. The activity LEDs signify a DLP and ordered set activity on the bus but no TLP activity, uh, no reads or writes, no data being transferred by a user. I've completely disabled all of our filtering to show just how much traffic comes across the bus uh, without filtering and without the user transferring any data. Uh, so we see here that our entire 18 gigabyte buffer is being filled uh, just over once a second. So uh, this is idle data, the vast majority of it, also DLPs for flow control, skips, and end data stream ordered sets. So I'll stop capture here and going back to the filter, uh, restore us to our default settings. So very significantly, uh, idle data is now excluded from the trace as are errors associated with going in and out of low power states. Uh, we're also excluding from our trace all ordered sets but we're still including uh, TLPs even though none are present on the bus currently. So we see here, uh, resuming capture, a vastly different picture of buffer utilization. Uh, it's now going to take uh, much, much longer to fill our buffer and so our existing DLP and ordered set filtering does a great job at maximizing buffer utilization, especially for those not working uh, directly with ordered set uh, and DLP kind of device bring up. So stop and capture once again, we'll jump back to to cover NVMe transactions. So uh, NVMe transactions consist uh, loosely of eight steps, the majority of which can be seen and observed by an analyzer, uh, some of which cannot though. For example, submission queue entries to tail um, occur entirely within the root unless the controller has its own set of memory uh, in order to to have its own submission queue. Uh, we're assuming that that's not the case as those devices have yet to come to market. Um, the second step in an NVMe transaction is a submission queue doorbell. This is sent from the root to the controller uh, to let the controller know that new commands are available to be uh, arbitrated and executed. When ready, the controller initiates a command fetch. Uh, this command fetch is answered by the root with the command fetch completion. And this gives the command and all the relevant uh, information to the controller so that that command can then be arbitrated and then in step four, uh, executed. Once execution is finished, the controller submits a completion queue entry uh, to the completion queue at the root and then sends an interrupt signifying to the root that the controller is completely finished uh, executing this command. The root then processes the completion queue entries and sends a completion queue doorbell to the controller, letting the controller know that uh, commands have been cleared from the completion queue and that those spaces in the completion queue can be reused uh, by the controller. So We've enabled uh, various filter types that can be uh, combined um, by the user in various ways to provide extremely powerful uh, transaction filtering. Um, first off, if a bus device function number, which identifies uh, a PCIe or NVMe device on the bus, is given to the filter along with at least one submission queue ID, we see that um, the uh, doorbells 
both for the submission and completion queues, uh, are now left out of the trace. Uh, the command execution, all that data, is also excluded, uh, as well as completion queue entries and uh, the interrupt. And so we see that whereas we had um, roughly eight different events uh, captured for each NVMe transaction, we now have just two, the command fetch request and the command fetch completion. If a bus device function is given to the filter along with a completion queue ID, then we see once again that doorbells are excluded from the trace um, as well as the command execution data and the interrupt. Um, but also now the command fetch request and completion are also filtered out. Uh, what is included in the trace are the completion queue entries and that's now the only part of the transaction that you'll see in the trace. Uh, lastly, if we provide a bus device function number to uh, the filter, as well as the controller registers, uh, then we see that now the doorbells are included in the trace, but all other aspects of the transaction, the uh, data, uh, the interrupt, the completion queue entries, the command fetch request and completion, uh, are now all excluded from the trace. And this can be done for one specific uh, device on the bus or for many different ones. Again, many different combinations are possible um, and, and are selectable by the user. So jumping back to our uh, bus expert analyzer, uh, coming to the filter, we'll show you how this is to be done. The first thing that we do is check to enable our TLP filtering. Now, if we do nothing more than check this, uh, that is if we do not provide uh, a bus device function number or any of the queues or control register information to the filter, then all TLPs will be excluded from the trace. Um, obviously, we, we want to show what uh, the, the filter can do, so we're going to include at least some TLPs. Uh, directly below here, we provide the user the ability to enter uh, manually a bus device and function number. So uh, by clicking the Add button, we now have here under User Defined BDFs, uh, the, the BDFs that we've entered in manually here. Uh, we also have here uh, BDFs from Analyzer. We've taken our hardware that allows us to track NVMe activity in real time and use that to capture uh, information that you can use as a user to quickly and accurately populate your uh, NVMe filters. And so uh, we have here one BDF that the, um, that the analyzer has seen, uh, 100, and if we expand that, we see all of the submission and completion queue information. Um, now certainly, we can drag over this information uh, one by one. To populate our filter. But we also provide the ability uh, to do this all at once. So if I clear the filter and grab just this BDF and drop it here, we see that the BDF submission and all submission and completion queues have now been provided to the filter. All that's left to do is to give this BDF to the control register filter and now we see that um, all of the transaction information for that specific uh, BDF is included in the trace. In other words, um, we see what I have here as filter configuration number four. So a BDF along with all submission queues and completion queue IDs and its controller register information has been provided to the filter. And so we see that the doorbells, the command fetch request and completion, um, the completion queue entries to tail, and the completion queue doorbell uh, updates are now all included in the trace for this given BDF. Uh, so before you think that nothing has been filtered out, 
Uh, it's important to note that uh, step four, the command execution and data, is now excluded. And so that means that the, the largest by far uh, part of the NVMe transaction, the data that's being passed across, uh, is now being excluded from the trace. And so this results in a substantial uh, buffer savings, uh, which we'll now demonstrate. So I need a moment to start uh, TLP traffic coming across my device, and then we'll resume uh, seeing how the filter operates. So jumping over to the uh, status screen here, uh, capture is not in progress, so we don't see the buffer filling up. But we do see here that now the TLP lights are lit, uh, signifying that we have TLP traffic on the bus. I've initiated a test that's running 50% reads and 50% writes to our NVMe drive. So jumping to the filter, uh, first as a baseline, I'll disable the TLP filtering but you'll notice that our settings are still in place so that we can activate them um, at any moment. So now we press start capture and we can see that there is a lot more traffic uh, coming across the bus and that traffic um, is the TLP, uh, the TLPs being transferred, the reads and writes. So if I stop capture we can take a quick look at what kind of traffic is on the bus we see our transaction view loading, and now we see uh, in the transaction view uh, NVMe writes and NVMe reads. Um, and we see the submission queue doorbell ring, the command fetch request. Uh, this write is the completion, uh, in other words, the command fetch completion. And then we see uh, the data, the command being executed on the bus, and then the command completion and the completion doorbell ring. So again, all of the information, uh, including the data, is being included in the trace at this point. We'll now jump back and enable our filter and see what kind of result we get then. So once again, uh, if you looked carefully, you'll see that the buffer is filling much more slowly than it was. If we go ahead and hit stop capture now, uh, our execution, our performance is that much faster because there's less information to deal with. And now as we look, we see the same uh, NVMe writes and reads. And we do see the submission queue doorbell, the command fetch, um, the command fetch completion, uh, that tells that, that this is a write command. Um, but then between the com command com fetch completion and the completion of the command, we don't see anything. The data have all been filtered out. And then finally we see the completion queue doorbell ring. And so this is perhaps the most common use of our filter to exclude data. Um, but as we said before, uh, using the other filter configurations, you can filter out the doorbells, uh, you can filter out um, the, the command fetches, you can filter out the command completions. So again, a very powerful array of filtering options. Uh, it should be noted that where uh, submission queues are filtered out, uh, transaction view lacks the necessary information to build transactions and so uh, transaction view will automatically disable itself. So again, nothing for you as a user to uh, worry about or to keep track of, uh, but just realize that if you've got the filter, the TLP filter working, uh, enabled, and transaction view doesn't load, it means that you're leaving out a vital piece of an NVMe transaction, um, and that's the reason for it being disabled. Um, protocol view, spreadsheet view, etc will all work normally um, with whatever filter settings you might be using, whether those are the TLP filter or the ordered set and DLP filter. And that concludes this presentation. Uh, we appreciate your attention. Any questions, feel free to contact me at heath at serialtech.com.